Greetings, this is uh, week one, lecture three. So in the West, I think we're facing a crisis of political identity. That crisis of political identity has created for us a great challenge when, when thinking in terms of neighboring well. A democracy that no longer operates with a shared vision of civic virtue and decency, and no longer promotes a corporate vision of the good of all. Now, I understand how loaded this conversation is. Nowhere in the history of our country has our democracy necessarily and intentionally sought the good of all. All has always been limited to some. But a democracy that loses its capacity for the hopes of the vision has two necessary outcomes. First, it requires fear to be that which coalesces people with radically different versions of the good and driven by niche identity and selfish consumptive desires. Fear is the point at which political agendas are built. That fear leads to the second necessary outcome. Building platforms on fear drives us to an us-them mentality. It drives us into camps or politicized tribal identities. Understand that tribal identities have historically been insulated identities. There are social scientists that argue that our fear of the other is rooted in our ancient historic organizing of life in tribes and the fear of danger that can come from outside the camp. We've been neatly divided up and not always by our fears. I understand that. I understand this is a nuanced argument whereby some would suggest that material prosperity is also another coalescing force. But what this points to is that what brings us together outside of a common shared vision of the good of all is either selfish intoxication with safety and security on the one hand or privilege and prosperity on the other. This us and them ideology has made it increasingly difficult to do neighboring or in relationships at all well. We're told it is essential to identify which camp to which you belong. The, those are your neighbors, your tribe. Know, that, know what you are for and in many cases know what you are against. Our platform is the one that promises us both protection and prosperity. Their platform will destroy us, bankrupt us, isolate us, etc. Anyone that falls outside of your camp is by nature not a neighbor, but a threat or an enemy. The political rhetoric operates at the poles of either this or that. The this that us believe in or the that that them believe in. There is no room for moderation or nuance in conversations. Our fear of danger, the other, scarcity, loss of privilege, loss of prominence or difference has driven us to seek refuge in the arms of the party that promises to quell our fears and defeat them. This political rhetoric also serves to make us hypersensitive, or dare I say suspicious, of our neighbors. We take note of the rainbow, fish, political, coexist, etc. bumper sticker on the back of their car in the driveway. And immediately we make judgments about them, their character. We begin to them, them. Neighboring that has already begins at a neatly divided us and them is patronizing and insincere and often smug. It might feign kindness, but does nothing to move us beyond our polarized entrenchments toward a meaningful embrace. When we us and them ourselves, we are less inclined to listen to one another's stories, empathize with their struggles, or hear their perspectives, and more prone to build our cases defend our perspectives and attempt to win the battles. We begin to see neighbors that we know little of and those that we've known well, but only recently discovered as a them, as someone to demand from which side of the aisle they choose to sit before we make room for, for them to sit on any side of our dinner table. Those that we might have once asked, how's your mom on Facebook, we now lose our minds when we discover they've posted a meme about which we disagree. Fear drives us not only to isolation, as has been mentioned in prior lectures, but also into affinity groups with those that we most agree with. Difference, diversity, otherness play less and less a priority in our lives. We surround ourselves with, with ideology we already accept, voices that already affirm, and friends that already are on our side. Neighboring becomes limited by our neatly divided categories liberal or conservative, Republican or Democrats, Black Lives Matter or Blue Lives Matter, for illegals or for safety, build the wall or let the murderers in, capitalists or socialists, 
All of these politicized categories are rooted in both our desire for protection and our hopes for prosperity. The divisive political rhetoric, it makes it difficult to envision those we share proximity as neighbor, as I've been told that those that will disagree with me are a threat and my enemy. The last point that I want to make in this lecture points the next issue, which is making difficult neighboring in our contemporary society. We've talked about living in a culture of fear, and we've talked about the divisive political rhetoric of us and them. And derivatively of all of this is the tendency we have to live by bland stereotyping. We stereotype others, neighboring becomes increasingly difficult. Neighboring requires the capacity to see and embrace others in their uniqueness, to see them in their story, in their distinct dignity. Stereotyping bypasses uniqueness and instead jumps to conclusions based on arbitrary assumptions based on one's color, ethnic origin, religion, clothing, dietary preferences, geographic location, political party affili affiliation, etc. We don't need to stand in the openness of relationships to discover someone's story. We've already sketched it for them based on our preliminary assumptions. When a person feels stereotyped, there's a loss of discovery, grace, and reciprocity. We exist on the surface with one another. Our associations with one another are strained under the weight of our prior assumptions about one another. One of my favorite movies that illustrates in a comedic way the power of fear and the paralyzing impact of assumptions and stereotypes is the movie Sandlot. In this movie, a bunch of kids run out, run out uh, all summer to play baseball, but occasionally a ball will get smacked over the fence at a home that everyone in the neighborhood was home, was thought was home to a mean man with a vicious dog that would eat children. All movie, the kids would attempt to avoid what they already knew about this neighbor until they they had to get back one of the balls that they really needed to get back from that had been hit over the fence. After some hilarious antics, the boys come to discover that the old black man that lived in the house was blind because of an accident, accident as a baseball player and that he was in fact a wonderfully kind and generous person. This speaks to the ways in which true neighboring, the willingness to share space, name our preconceived ideas and judgments, and risk relationship will lead us to be shocked by one another. Much like the presumption that it would either be a priest or a Levite that would help the man in the ditch in the Good Samaritan story. Not the Samaritan. But in telling the story, Jesus invites us to see our neighbor differently. Breaking free from the trap of fear, pointing at the divisive political rhetoric, and naming our stereotyping is a right step in moving toward our increased capacity to neighbor well.